Poor Chandra was a small boy. He was playing in the lap of Ma Maharani Kaikeyi. Kaikeyi's love for him was so great. Indeed, she loved him even more than her own son, Bharat. And Ram was also very attached to Kaikeyi. <coughs> Mother, do you love me? Of course I love you. Well, I have something to ask you. It is very important. Only you can give it to me. Anything, my Ram. You will have to sacrifice everything. Do you promise? Oh, Ram, you are my heart and soul. I would give you anything. When I grow up and return home after my marriage, my father will think of giving this palace to me. But I want you to ask him to give the palace to Bharat and banish me to the forest for 14 years. No! No, I cannot do something so cruel. But you promised. If you do not fulfill my request, everything will be ruined. All the so everybody, all the demigods have been waiting for me to destroy these demons. These demons are all there. No, I cannot do this. For the benefit of the whole world, you will have to do this. And thus, the great epic of the Ramayana begins. Just see the love of Kaikeyi. She would be hated by the universe. Her son, Bharat, would reject her and would never call her mother again. She sacrificed everything to fulfill the desire of her wrong. Some years later, Kaikeyi fulfilled her promise. The two brothers, Bharat and Satyugna, had gone to their maternal uncle's palace. And upon returning to Ayodhya, they noticed that all was silent. Usually the city was cheerful, and so many activities were joyfully taking place. But now, it was like a lady whose husband is dead, and who wears no decorations or ornaments. Seeing these and other inauspicious omens, Bharat and Satyugna became fearful. When they entered the royal palace and went to Kaikeyi's chamber, they were stunned to hear how Bharat had been banished to the forest for 14 years, and Bharat was to be crowned king. And in Rob's absence, their father had died of a broken heart. When Bharat heard this and the reason for it, he became completely inimical towards his mother. With great lamentation, he fell at the feet of his Gurudev, the sister Rishi, and the royal assembly. Oh, who is such a sinner as I, on whose account Ram, Lakshman, and Sita have been exiled to the forest? The king, my father, ascended to heaven the moment Ram departed. Oh, how wretched am I! I am hearing everything, and yet I still remain alive. Oh, there are no words to describe the cruelty and the hardness of my heart. Clinging to this body, born of Kaikei, this desolate life, is exceedingly unfortunate. <laughs> My dear child Bharat, one is powerless against providence. Loss and gain, life and death, glory and infamy, all these lie in the hands of the Supreme. Trying to argue whom we should blame and with whom we should be angry is a waste of good intelligence. Do not lament for your father. There was nor shall there ever be a monarch like King Dasarat. Who can glorify him, my dear child? We've got such virtuous sons such as Ram, Lakshman, Satrum, and yourself. Please, 
reverently obey the king's command. The king has bestowed the kingship upon you, and it is your duty to uphold the words of your father. Bharat, take up the throne of Ayodhya. Cease to grieve, my child, and obey the guru's order. This life, everything is so uncertain. My son Ram is in the forest, and the great king, my husband, is in heaven. This is not the time to be faint of heart. You are the only support of your family, as well as the citizens of Ayodhya. Have courage. Reverently obey your guru's order. Cherish your subjects and relieve the suffering of your family. Mother Koshalia and my Gurudev have given me excellent advice. It has been endorsed by all present and has even been ordered by that so-called mother. I know that everyone should take the advice of one's preceptors, parents, and elders and act upon them with a cheerful heart. Even though I fully realize this, my heart is not satisfied. My heart beats only for the service of Ram. I have been deprived of that privilege by the perversity of Maharani Kaike. Of what value is a kingdom if the lotus feet of Ram are not to be seen? It is only an abode of sorrow. An abundance of enjoyments are of no use to a diseased body. Similarly, what is the point? 